Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another spring type airsoft review. This is the Remington M2010 ESR or Enhanced Sniper Rifle. This is a replica of the actual firearm and this is only a manually operated screener. I bought this from Shopee at a price of 685 pesos. The product link will be in the description below. This unit is a sniper airsoft springer. One thing that's different though is that there's no bolt action. Instead, the charging handle is located on the right side. It's just like the Dragon of Sniper where the same charging handle location is on the right side. It was just through luck that I was able to find this on Shopee as it was a very rare springer. For a quick glance, you'll be mesmerized on how beautiful this gun is. I'm a big fan of snipers as well as ARs or SMGs. This would go down as one of my favorites. Very great and secure packaging and these are the package contents that needs to be assembled first. First off, we have to screw this buttstock. It already came with a screwdriver and screws. So let's go ahead and assemble this thing. Also, this outer barrel, which is plastic, needs to be attached manually going inside the handguard. Inside the handguard area is this also plastic inner barrel, wherein you have to connect the outer to the inner so that the outer barrel can get in. For the top railing, it needs to be screwed in as well. The screws that came along the package are assigned to each vacant spaces on this railing. This is only the top railing, but the left and right side rails are already attached. We have this very basic muzzle for our gun. There's no special locking mechanism for this to be attached. You just stick it directly to our outer barrel. The bipod also looks just like a toy. It's not so good looking. When you attach it on the bottom rail, you need to squeeze it to be able to expand the bipod and this, it has like a lock to make the bipod stand. Also, this scope isn't really a legit scope, it has no lens. When you look through it, it's like just looking at an empty PVC tube. It also has its own built-in laser. Just used other scopes with lenses so it would look fitting for this sniper. The magazine is a short type of magazine. I can estimate you can fill this with 10 BBs. It has a 10 BB compartment at the bottom. I will show you later on how to use it. This is where your mag release is located behind the magazine and in front of the trigger guard. Push forward to release the magazine. Now this is the charging handle which is again should have been a bolt action. 
that is located on the rear, not on the right side. Now it feels just like a Dragunov instead of a Remington Sniper. It is embedded into a metal structure to help with the force of the spring. The buttstock is just a dummy, no actual adjustment levers or anything. Again, this was what I was saying that this should have been a bolt action, but nevertheless, it still kinda looks cool with that side charge. Now we have finished assembling the parts that need to be screwed and put in together. This is now how our sniper rifle would look. Okay, and that's all for the background info, assembly, and quick parts overview. It's now time to test it outside. The mag release is just the same as other snipers I've reviewed. It locks the magazine very well. Nothing's loose or anything. You can hear that very distinct clicking sound when you return the magazine into the sniper rifle. This bipod is kinda rough that at first it can't fit easily but you just have to push it more like what I did here. I just kept pushing until it finally got fit. And this is the sort of lock I mentioned earlier to set the bipod to a standing position. I didn't use the original scope here, I just used the L96 scope instead since it has a lens but doesn't tightly fit to the rail. What I did was just attach a tape lobe the base of the scope so that it could sort of decrease the loose space in between the scope and the top railing. Surprisingly, it has a complete set of iron sights which is weird since this is a sniper rifle but it still looks dope. This top railing is very long compared to the side rails which is one fourth of the top rail in length. You can put a laser or flashlight on both of these side rails. Now to fill the magazine, simply open the hatch at the bottom of it, fill it with BBs until it's about two thirds full, then you would just pull back the sliding spring, point the magazine downwards, perform a motion like pouring ketchup on a food repeatedly until you can see the BBs filling the magazine. Keep doing it until it has just the right amount of BBs. I recommend not really filling the magazine so full. Just keep doing it until it has just the right amount of BBs. I recommend not really filling the magazine so that there would be less pressure on the sliding spring of the magazine. Again, it should be just maximum of 10 BBs. This muzzle looks just like a rifle muzzle. It can freely move when you rotate it. And this outer barrel kind of looks bent. It isn't straight, but it's not that obvious that it throws off the whole gun. It's just, if you look closely, you can make out the degree of bend to this barrel. Its handguard kind of looks the same to that of an M-Lock handguard. And again, this could well be a rifle if the magazine was longer and shorter barrel. One flaw for me though is this slightly loose buttstock after we screw them in place, it still feels like it's gonna fall off. I suggest you just don't hold it to this very often so that it won't break apart. A usual trigger, nothing special. The grip looks awesome also. Doesn't look plasticky, fits perfectly when you're holding it. Great design on this grip.
Again, this Dragonov bolt, I guess that's what we'll call it now, I suggest you use two fingers when charging it so that you'll be able to grip it well. Just look at this thing. According to the product description, the total length of this is 115 centimeters. Super crazy long, this one. The results were not so great with this shot grouping, I wasn't even able to hit the 9s. I'll give this 7.5 out of 10 rating for accuracy. Since the BBs just bounce off, that means the FPS of this isn't like very high. My best estimate is about 150 to 200 FPS. Now after the shooting tests, we'll now assess the performance of the Springer sniper rifle. First is accuracy, well we just talk about it. Very poor, but I can say it do shoot straight, just mostly below the sights of the gun. Maybe if longer ranges this could perform well, since here we are very close to the target. But yeah, the accuracy is still a long way to go. On some BBs that jam, it happened on some one or two occasions. But it's probably due to the BBs not ready or the BBs not really on top of the magazine mouth. To make sure you won't make a ghost shot, push the pellet release button besides the mouth so that the uppermost BB can give way for a correct feeding to the chamber. Realism factor? Well, it do look like it's a real firearm and not bad for a Springer. Parts wise, this unit is a great copy of the M21 ESR. I just wish the pot stock had adjustments had a good looking bipod and of course this must have a bolt action performance of the side charging bolt when charging a full mag it has some sort of a rough sensation i don't know if that's just how it is to the internals but maybe if i can play with it frequently it would go away as the roughness would fade over time parts durability well this one answers the question how long will this one hold I mean like it can last for some time if you just do proper maintenance and store properly to clean up some dust getting trapped in the internals and also avoid charging it too quickly or too hard. Well it's not meant to be a rapid firing weapon anyways when handling it maybe don't grab it by the stock since it's kinda loose. The best way for me I think is to just hold it by the grip or sometimes grabbing it by the handguards will also be fine. All in all, I gotta say this goes into my top 5 best springers above all of what I have reviewed over the course of this channel and for me the money is worth it. I wonder how this shoots 
if the distance was kinda longer though, I will just make a separate video for that. If you're like a super gun or airsoft nerd, you'll probably say this sniper is a cursed one. On some parts, it's true, but like for me who don't care what the specifics look, look like, such as its iron sights, bolt, I wouldn't really mind buying a springer that's a sniper with an M4 iron sights and a side charging handle. If it works, it works. And you get what you pay for, as what they say. For the, for the final notes, don't fill up the magazine, only 8 to 10 pallets is sufficient. Don't grab the butt stock, avoid rapid firing of the side charging handle, and as always, wear eye protection during play. Once again, this is the Remington XM2010, a replica of the actual firearm Remington M2010. This is a spring type airsoft sniper, a very cool looking sniper rifle for all you sniper fanatics. Looks realistic, great FPS, and probably longer range, great for collection item and blinking. And that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you like this review. Like, share, and subscribe for more spring reviews. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.